This episode of the Red Beard Podcast is brought to you by DJ Tone Entertainment. If you're looking for a DJ to provide the best entertainment with cutting edge equipment for your event, then look no further. From weddings and corporate events to birthday parties and family reunions, DJ Tone Entertainment can do it all. You can find their rates on Facebook or message them for a personalized quote. So don't wait. Book DJ Tone Entertainment today. Yo, what's going on, everybody? This is Tony from the Red Beard Podcast, and it's freaking Friday as usual, man. So I'm excited to talk about a bunch of stuff. Uh, guys, we're going to just talk about the best stuff ever, the first thing being Top Gun 2. Uh, we've talked about this on the past couple episodes or previous episodes or a thousand episodes before, but it is official. It started filming two weeks ago. It's happening. Uh, we're going to talk about who's involved in the cast. Also, Into the Spider-Verse is happening. Um, a lot of people don't know what that means or even what that is, uh, but a trailer was released, and uh, we're going to have some input into what's going on with that. Uh, also, the new movie that looks super offensive with puppets <laughs> called Happy Time Murders is actually being sued by Sesame Street because in the trailer it says, No Sesame, All Street. And um, we'll talk about what the deal is with that lawsuit and if uh, that actually makes any sense. And um, there was a Netflix series called Evil Genius, which is blowing up, probably just as popular as Making a Murderer. Um, almost everybody in the world watched that, and now Evil Genius is kind of right behind that um, with a lot of views. So we'll talk about uh, what we thought about that. So uh, with that being said, stick around. podcast is brought to you by these cool dudes <laughs> hey guys uh we are back and we are ready to actually start off this episode so um i'm just gonna go around the table we do have a special guest today but as usual i got ren yo ren say what's up what's gucci fam hell yeah it's the best intro that's like your, that's gonna be your staple <laughs> um and uh we got my man jim rock what's going on buddy hello how is everybody today i'm waving back <laughs> Because you're waving to the invisible <laughs> audience. I'm going to say it every time, as long as you keep doing it. Um, and uh, we got my man, uh, you know, Blast from the Past over here. Cooley, what's going on, man? You are off the oxy. How are you feeling? Much better. <laughs> much better? Yeah. <laughs> you feel a little more lucid this episode? There's so much pain. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, if you guys had it, did not know, last episode, Cooley was not with us. And the previous episode... He was a little messed up because of the uh, the drugs. I still he was wasn't on. with you in the last episode. No, you you yeah you, you were definitely far gone, man. I was with um, you, not with you. Yeah, definitely. You you were there, I think, and spirit, but you're physically, you're just wasn't letting you be there. Um, and the special guest today is a friend of Cooley's and and already a friend of ours, Mark, who is a comic book price guide expert, um, comic book expert. So, Mark, say what's up, man. Hey, what's going on, guys? Yeah, dude, psyched to have you with us this episode. Good um, to see you, Mark. We are going to talk about a bunch <laughs> of stuff. Um, so, first thing, I, I don't know about you guys, but I'm a big 80s fan. Uh, I love the 80s. I'm a big fan of 80s movies, and one of my favorite movies from the 80s is Top Gun. And uh, it's been rumored for a very long time that Top, Un Top Gun was going to have a sequel. And it's been on the fence. It's happening. It's not happening. It's shooting. It's not shooting. But... Um, Top Gun created an Instagram and officially released their first picture, which said, um, I feel the need. And it was uh, a shot from, you know, the 80s movie with Tom Cruise in front of one of the the, uh, the jets. So that was basically to let everybody know that they had started filming, uh, which is a big thing. One of the cool things about this, too, is they can film. Uh, they I can't talk today. I'm sorry. They confirmed that Val Kilmer is definitely in the cast. Which I'm psyched about. Um, a lot of people have questions about Is Val Kilmer. Is he going to be able to fit in the cockpit? <laughs> like, what the fuck? Dude. He comes back and says, I'm Iceman. It's Ice Cream Man. Like, I was so waiting for all McDonald's these. Ice cream machine. I was waiting for all these. I mean, Don Carrara had one where he said it's going to be called Top Heavy. I feel heavy. the need. 
for liposuction. <laughs> so, well, listen. All right. Let, can, go ahead, Jim. I, feel I know you're going. <laughs> no, the I'll need gonna... to feed. <laughs> <laughs> Is he gonna make a cameo as one of the planes? <laughs> Mark, you got anything? Uh, well, Terry Fisher can slim down for Star Wars. Then. Oh Let's shit! Oh. Wow. Not all the way though. Let's be too honest. soon, not man. Too fucking soon. Oh, it's not too soon. Fuck it. So, um, here, here's one thing. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make you guys all feel like shit. Val Kilmer actually did have cancer recently, and uh, oh, so he lost some of that weight. He, he did. He lost a ton of weight. People thought he might have had throat cancer. Good. Um, he slimmed down. Uh, since then, uh, I actually have looked him up. He gained a little bit back, but to the point where he looked healthy. Um, f- all I know is that I heard that because of Top Gun, he was actually trying to actually get back into some physical shape again. Like he started working out again. Um, he was supposed to come to the last Rhode Island Comic Con, but did not show. He canceled. Uh, it was never rumored as I never explained why he didn't show. But I was actually psyched to meet him, and that didn't happen. Um, but regardless, I'm psyched that he's actually going to be in Top Gun too, because it brings the whole Iceman Maverick dynamic back into the film, um, and that's something that was kind of they started off hating each other, and then at the end of the the film, you know. Iceman is like you could be my wingman anytime and they were cool so who knows how this is going to end up they're probably going to be like instructors I guess in, in some capacity I would think um, but Tom Cruise doesn't age so we'll see what happens um, is, is Moose coming back? No he's dead bro you gotta watch the first one and his name was Goose not Moose <laughs> <laughs> whatever the fuck his name was <laughs> yo is Moose coming back? <laughs> I saw the movie Hot Shots. He was my Hell. favorite. <laughs> I loved Moose. <laughs> nah, dude, he died and then he came back on ER. So, uh, and then he died on ER. <laughs> so, has, has, has people honestly been clamoring for this movie? It's yeah. I mean, it's been always. It's one of those things where people always wanted to know if <clears throat> if they were going to make another Top Gun because the first one did so well, and it was hinted at. Tom Cruise wanted to do another one. And then uh, I was talking to Don about this about six months ago, and he said that I guess one of the original directors of the first movie um, or somebody that was involved with the first movie went on location scouting with Tom Cruise Mm. for different places where they could start filming the second. And then like a week later, the guy committed suicide. So that's why the movie like just didn't happen. Uh, But it was definitely it was on its way to being a, a thing. And then it, it just didn't. So, um, but I mean, we'll see what happens. I mean, are you guys excited about Top Gun too? Would you go see this? Absolutely. I mean, this has got to be one of the most anticipated sequels since ET two, which hasn't been made yet either. Absolutely not. <laughs> you won't go see it. No, I. To me, it's just gonna be like the last Indiana Jones movie, just past its time. And Steven Spielberg apologized for that, which is why he's making a new one, <laughs> another one. Uh, I think it's going to take place in a nursing home. But. I will not go see it. I ha- I've never seen the first one. I have no intention. It, not my thing. You, but see, but if you haven't seen the first one though, you at least got to give it a I shot. I saw the I saw the homoerotic volleyball montage. <laughs> oh yeah, which and is I also a it's a ca- it's a Cards Against Humanity card. That's what that is. It's I a ba- reference to that. that. I based my whole opinion about is, Top Gun. Yeah, that scene is like really oh, fucking nice. weird. I've watched, it, it I've watched like, the clips on YouTube where, like, Val Kilmer bites his teeth at Tom Cruise. <laughs> yeah, no, that's a little weird. They always called him out for that. That was a little weird. The, the whole volleyball scene has always been a joke. But, I mean, like, it's just a bunch of dudes, like, playing volleyball, getting all jacked up. But they do stuff in slow motion, which makes it look really awkward. And it's like, uh, this didn't happen in slow motion, like, in real time. It has the best song, though. It does. Which brings us to our next point. You're talking about Danger Zone by Kenny Loggins, right? Yeah, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> the with the boys. <laughs> I knew that wasn't the song, but I was trying to fucking make a way to bring that in to be super awkward. No, I mean, I, I honestly though, like that that is probably the one thing that got me amped up about that movie is like the sa- the the song Danger Zone is fucking awesome. It's a classic '80s song. It ties itself to that movie and. We were talking about this earlier, and Mark, you had some good thoughts on that. So, 
can they TMZ ran into Kenny Loggins in the airport and they were asking him about Top Gun 2. Are you going to do Danger Zone again? And, and for me, it's like it's already been done. The song's there. You can just reuse it. But he wants to do it again. But he hasn't mentioned with who. But he wants to do it with like a new rock band. And he wants to like do a duet where it's them both doing Danger Zone. I don't see why that's even needed. And you kind of had voiced your opinion on that. Uh, that's just opening up a, a can of worms for something that may not go over well with the fans. Right. Like, I wouldn't want to change it. You can't, you can't top the original, so you're just looking at something that's second best. Yeah, man, you can't. So Kenny Loggins just wants to do it with a random rock band? Not random. He he's like he has somebody in mind, but he didn't want to say who it was. But we don't know who it is. He didn't want it. He didn't want to give it away. Like it yet. could be Fallout Boy or Disturbed or I could, yeah, anybody, I man. I, I mean, don't see a problem with them doing a duet. I also don't see a problem with them going solo. Oh, all right. Do, all right, do you want to just is that like a segue? <laughs> That's, that is a segue. <laughs> it's, it's, I'm glad you recognize, sir. So, <laughs> so, all right, well, that means it was a good one. Let's uh, slide out of the danger zone and, 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 and take solo on this, man. Go for it. Go solo. Oh okay. Last week, I was not present, and everybody got to talk about solo and what they thought about it. And by everybody, I mean Ren. Um, I talked about it. What are you talking about? We all man, talked about it. I know, but Ren said the most offensive shit to me. <laughs> Oh, that's the. Well, Even though I I love her to death, she out knows of love, this. Out of love, she knows. What this. else is new? But <laughs> Ren saying offensive shit. But <laughs> you would think it would be Jim Rock most of the time look, saying I, offensive shit. Nobody was against Alden Einenrich, Reich, whatever the fuck his name is, more than I and Ren. Right. Prior to watching this movie, right. She wasn't a fan of his chin specifically. Yeah, the chin specifically. The look, he he looked like he was he looks too old to play the role so on and so forth. But when I watched the movie, I actually went to go see this movie because it's a Star Wars film and how can you not? Did you um, see it with Movie Pass though? I did not. I actually oh! actually paid to see this. Real money. Um, paid real money. Uh, went in. That movie needs it too. And I just sure wanted to yeah. just wanted to throw my two cents in here. I'm just going to say this for the movie. I did not hate it. Which, yeah, which yeah, I it's heard. a I did, fun movie. I, it, it wasn't. It wasn't that. It definitely was not fun for me. <laughs> okay. Well, but I am going. I'm it? going to go on record and say this movie was not a fun movie. The, the guy okay? that played Han Solo. Uh, not Deadpool Solo. is a fun movie. The guy that the, the guy that played Lando saved that movie. He yeah. nailed that. Absolutely. Role. Oh, absolutely. Totally yeah. nailed it. Just yeah, like Donald Glover Downey, did. Like Robert Downey Jr. nailed Iron Man. He mm-hmm. nailed that role. Okay. But um, but Alden Iron and Rick or oh, right. I don't know what his fucking name is. <laughs> I'm going to say that every time, too. Just every single solo. time. <laughs> yeah, solo. solo. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's... He he wasn't as bad as I thought he was going to be. Okay. And, and he looks a lot younger on screen than he did in the trailers. Like, when I saw the... When I saw the first scene when he was in the car, like, in, in that little speeder or whatever, like, I'm like, oh, this is a scene, like, from before. Like, I thought it was actually a different actor. I'm looking at him, and I'm like, no, this this is a younger kid. Mm-hmm. But then, like they did a close up, and I was like, "Oh, it's it's him." But he, like he looked, he just looked younger. It's like I think they just in the trailer we just got these weird angles where just he he had all these weird lines on his face, and and the shadows were hitting him differently, and he just looked older. Like, but nice. in here he did look a lot younger uh, than he did in the trailer. Um, the damn the the yeah. stu- like the only thing that really pissed me off in the movie was the there were some real dumb real dumb scenes. Like the like the fucking th- there's this like gang leader, this gang boss. Yeah. She looks like a millipede or a centipede that I like rises out, like the, <laughs> rises, rises out of the rises out of the sewer. Right. And she just like she's just like a fucking cartoon character. She's just like <laughs> like she like it's like it's like nobody watched a Star Wars movie before they made this shit and like they don't know how like aliens communicate, right? It's just like she was just like really just fucking over the top silly. And it just took me right out of the Star Wars universe. Like, worse than it was. I mean, and correct me if I'm wrong. I thought it was literally that scene was literally worse than any of the humor that was in the Last Jedi. Worse than Jamie Fox and Spider Man Two. <laughs> no, that's impossible. Actually, no, no. Actually, it might have been. <laughs> 
because because possible. I would I would I would defer to your judgment <laughs> on that because I still haven't watched Spider Man two. I boycotted that shit. Good. Um, but uh, yeah, because at, at at that point I was just like enough is enough with fucking Sony Spider Man movies. I was just done with them. But do you feel like this guy like all right? So do you feel like Solo has done as as badly as it has as far as like box office sales because of all of the shit that people talked about it before it even came out. No, I think what happened is Disney. So, so for everything that you said last week, because you this is the thing that I had to say about what you said last week. You said that there was marketing and this and that. There was no fucking marketing for this movie. Thirty seconds in a Super Bowl is not equate to marketing for a movie. Like I mean, like Disney has put so much money and so much more money into things than that. And I the. The only time that I saw TV spots was like a week and a half before the movie was launched. I don't know, man. Like, there was there I, was I a disagree. there was a there was a thirty second spot in the Super Bowl. There was a one minute trailer or something like that, or a one and a half minute trailer after that that was released. It was like the full teaser, and then there was the full trailer, and then there was like a week and a half leading up to the film where there were TV spots that were. Dude, released. I don't know though. Like I watch a lot of TV. <clears throat> Like, like me and Beckle watch a lot of shows, like NBC, ABC, whatever, like even shit on Hulu. And like every fucking time there was a commercial for something, it was solo. It was like jammed down my throat. So I, mean, I don't know how, I mean, like, yeah, the Super Bowl was the first you, time we saw it. You, Yeah, but it was the same trailer is what but I'm it saying. Was, but it, but it, Whether they played but it, was it still over. Seen, but it was still seen more than one. It's, dude, it could have been five different people watching what I watched and then he would have seen the commercial. I just happened to see it multiple times. What I'm saying is it's the same commercial. Like, and what, what you're not Who getting... Who cares? What if they show out the same trailer it's not, for a movie? They're not, they're not pumping the money into the marketing that they were on other films. Because, like, when you, watched, when you watched the trailers leading up to The Last Jedi, when you watched the trailers leading up to The Force Awakens or, or uh, any of the Avengers films or any of the Marvel films, like, they have <clears throat> so many tra trailers and TV spots, like... Three, four, five trailers, final trailers, TV spots up the ass. Like, you didn't get that with, with Solo. You didn't. I'll but say it was lazy marketing. Like, they they put a lot out there, but it was spots where they were like, oh, a lot of people do, like, Hulu nowadays. It wasn't, like, orchestrated, like, here's a bunch of cool teasers and things right. like that. It wasn't, like, new images. It was all just the same garbage that they just tried to put a lot of places. So it might, it might not have been different content but it was consistent content right but when okay. i see the same trailer over and over and over and i don't see them putting any new trailers out that means what that means to me is that there are no other cool fucking scenes that you can put in a trailer so if you don't have any other cool scenes to show me sorry not going to see your movie but all right let me ask you this though as far as the rest of the movie went did you uh did they did they touch upon like the Kessel Run at all? Like was that talked about? Is that yeah? The Kessel Run was a thing, but the way they did it, it just felt like a. It was like they, it wasn't as. It didn't to me. It didn't seem as anything that was that should have been as hyped as it was. You know what so I mean? Like, like the, was, the Kessel Run didn't seem like this legendary thing. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Like they didn't play it off as. So like they this, did. So it you saw him like do it in the movie. It, it was. It happened. Right. Oh, all right. Word. So it did happen. Yeah. I wasn't sure if that was like where it ended in like. And it, the and next it one. wasn't even that the ship was fast to fast enough to do it. It's like he went through a wormhole and cheated and basically shaved minutes off the fucking thing. Like it, he it was distance. Like, yeah, parsecs. distance. Yeah, parsecs. Right. Yeah, shaved parsecs off of it. So uh, it was it was weird. So bottom line, I think we're all in agreement that Cooley believes that Alden Ehrenreich's skin looks a lot tighter on the big screen yeah. than it does yeah. on the small TV screen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Dude, yeah. waiter, you've wrapped very, that up. Very supple. But, but very supple. To uh, kind of uh, argue against what you guys are saying about how I did poorly, Disney, to their defense, came up with a good point. They said that it, they launched it right after Infinity War and Deadpool. Word. Yes. Good, so good people point. are still trying to see those movies, and if they didn't want to spend another $10 at the theater... Han Solo was left out. So yeah, it, but I mean, like the okay. I think the bottom line though is that the hype for this movie wasn't wasn't there. They didn't hype it enough. It wasn't. It nobody nobody was driven to see it. Everybody's. I mean, everybody's, <laughs> I don't know what you were doing. Oh, it's, it's like an balls. What were you yeah. doing? Well, it, no, no, it, it no, did I, set a Memorial Day weekend <laughs> record, I believe. It did, and it actually set a record for uh, Ron Howard. And it, it also was the most had, money he's ever made as a director. And it had worse sales in opening weekend than Justice League did. The Justice League was in a vacuum, though. 
I'm just like that, there was. I'm just saying there was nothing else playing at the time. Yeah, because like generally it, movies didn't do that well. Yeah, you know, Infinity apparently. War is still in theaters, so I mean, it's still competing with Infinity War. It's still competing with Deadpool. I mean, there was no competition for Justice League, and Justice League that was an opening weekend score that, like, over time, I almost guarantee you that sold. What's Jurassic be World come out? It's. Uh, I think it's out. June twenty second. Oh, is it June twenty second? Yeah. So that's going to be something that's going to compete against still Jurassic World is going to blow up. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. going to do yeah. well regardless. No, Solo is going to be out of theaters by then. That's what mm. I've heard. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, we'll have it'll be on DVD by the time Jurassic World comes out. <laughs> In a week <laughs> <and> a half. <laughs> <In> two weeks. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh shit! Yeah, but let, let's move on. I just wanted to weigh in and give my two cents or whatever. Well, I mean, this is something that uh, Glad you're back. You had kind of brought to my attention, so I'm gonna let you take this one, dude. Oh, uh, the the Spider Verse thing. Yeah, man. Yo, Into the Spider Verse dropped a new trailer today mm-hmm. while we're recording, which is not Friday, even though you're listening on Friday. It's so fucking weird. It's like a fucking. <laughs> it's like this like space time continuum fucking it's like a rift. Vortex, man. Yeah. yeah. It's like you went through the Kessel Run. Like when I'm talking yeah, is dude. not when you're hearing me, but 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 Ow. yeah, today today it's crazy. <laughs> Today, June sixth, mm-hmm. a Wednesday. Yeah, the new trailer for or trailer two for Spider Man Into the Spider Verse released, and it looks fucking dope. It looks awesome, man. Yeah, like it's got it's got everything that it needs to have. I mean, the humor, the the animation looks good. Except it was really it was weird for me, and I don't know if it was my phone. Or my internet, but I mean, what is, did it? Did, did it, it look like, like 3D? Like 3D? What you weren't well, wearing glasses? Yeah, it looked like yeah. 3D, and I wasn't wearing glasses. But it also looked like like the frame rate was a little like spotty. Yeah. Yeah. I think they're trying to make it. I saw the same thing. Like it I looked like claymation. Trying, well, I think they're trying to make it that way. I think it's supposed to have like a comic book feel, like you're flipping comic book pages. Okay, no, I, I didn't get that. I just thought it was just. I, I mean. Sure, if that's what they're going for, then I I don't really know that they achieved that though, because it just looked like it was. It looked like I was playing a game that was too powerful for the system I was playing it on. Could explain to some of the noobs like me what the Spider Verse is, because I think I have an idea, and I'm not thrilled about it. But maybe if you shed some light on it, it'll be so a bit better. Marvel, DC, and well. Well, there's the only Marvel and DC that that does this because they're the only two companies that have like had an existing universe uh, that has been spanning like decades, right? When you when you have these these uh, comic book companies, uh, let's let's go to DC first because they're the ones that started the whole multiverse idea. Um, like you had you have all these continuity issues because you have like these these characters that have been different in different books and different things. So they explained it as there being a multiverse. And then they had the crisis on Infinite Earths, which brought everything together. And then they did. Then they fucked up again. And then they had another crisis. And then they have they have a crisis like every five to ten years. Um, and and they kind of stopped doing that, which is great. Uh, thank you, DC, for not fucking having another crisis because I can't deal with another one of those. Um, but <laughs> Marvel <laughs> has started to has started to kind of catch up to DC in the sense that they've had multiple universes and multiple different like timelines and different things that they wanted to clean up so what they've done is they've like merged everything together through secret wars so they took like the ultimate universe and the marvel 616 universe and like stuff from like the 80s and things that happened that had been retconned and shit like that that they wanted to bring back and they just smashed everything together um and now they have one cohesive universe that they're trying to like, you know, kind of rebuild now. So um, what's the Spider Verse? The Spider Verse is all of the different Spider Men from the different multiverses and different universes and shit. Um, so the Spider Verse is just basically like when there is something that's happening in Spider Man's like fucking like little microcosm, let's call it. Uh, if he needs assistance or whatever, or if there's something that's like dire enough that it's affecting all of the different universes or different dimensions. Like these other Spider-Man characters would come together and like kind of like form like this like like an alliance Spider-Man or yeah an alliance of Spider-Man so you have like punk rock Spider-Man and you have like you know Spider-Man and Miles Morales Spider-Man and you have like all the different types and and kinds of Spider-Man coming together to help each other. There's one there's a Spider-Man from a reality where Uncle Ben becomes Spider-Man. So um, is this in this reality is everybody like a Spider-Man of some kind or is it just? multiple spider-man people no there's just multiple spider-man people from different realities where they are the spider-man of their universe 
and they're just kind of coming together to, as a team to kind of help each other out. But so, in this in this movie, it just looks like all it looks like so far from what we get from the trailer is that there's going to be Spider Man, Miles Morales, Ultimate Spider Man, and Gwen Stacy. I will say for somebody that isn't familiar with you know the the Spider Verse and I don't really know much about it, I wouldn't have got all that from the trailer. It, I was actually like, although I thought the trailer was awesome and I really want to see it, it it threw me a little bit off because I was like, wait a second. I don't know anything about what's going on. Why are there different, like, spider people? And then I got a little bit of clarity where the kid goes, uh, is it Miles Mor- Morales? Is that yeah. what he said? He goes, how many of there are you? And he's like, oh, there's, he goes, there's tons of us. Like, it's like as many as you would see at, like, a Comic-Con. He's like, a comic, And then all of a sudden he gets pulled in by, like, one of the webs. Yeah. And he was kind of like a, a, a moment of comedy. And that kind of, like, cleared up some of it for me. But I would never get excuse me, that explanation by watching I, the trailer. And I feel like, I don't know if like a lot of people are going to get it by the trailer and be interested enough to want to go see it if they don't understand it. I don't think that that's what Sony's going for. I think Sony is going to change because let's face it. Everything that I've seen from Sony has changed everything. Like in, in the first Spider-Man, he had organic web shooters and freaking green goblin looked like a power ranger. And, and, <laughs> It, they, they're just like they they just fucking just they're like oh fuck what they wrote I'm just gonna write my own shit and and we'll just put it on the screen and people will go because it's Spider-Man um, this does look pretty close to the Miles Morales story and I'm hoping that this is Miles Morales' movie and the rest of these people are just supporting characters and I'm mm-hmm. hoping that this is just his story with some other stuff going on is this going to the theater or direct to the market Th- theater in December oh wow is it yeah. a Christmas movie or it, it, I don't think like I don't <laughs> think the it's theme a, this Christmas. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, I was I was know, like yeah. I, I can't remember because they always release one on Christmas for the Jews. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think that it's a I don't think that it's a Christmas it's a theme. Very Jewish hyped movie. I don't think it's a Christmas themed movie, but I think it's going to be. It's definitely going to be released during Christmas time. <laughs> okay. I well I, I Happy guess. Hanukkah. Uh, so basically, so Cooley, what you're saying. Is that Han Solo skin is sexy as dick <laughs> in the new Star Wars prequel? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Would not would not mind rubbing my balls on it, but oh, well, Jim's would... input is killing it. This <laughs> <episode>. <laughs> yeah, so, Jer- uh... Jerome's gonna love this episode. <laughs> 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 Are, are any of you guys going to see the Spider-Man movie? <laughs> I'm definitely going to see Jerome's it. Jerome's dying right now, dude. Uh, oh, yeah, I'm going. I miss you, bro. It. 100% dude, I, 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 see I need I need Miles Morales to succeed, man, because I, I love that character, man, to death. That, that is like, to me, he's better than Peter Parker, like, hands down. And it's, it, it's not, it's not the, um, it's not the, the ethnicity or the race part of it. It's just the, the relatability part of it, because Peter Parker was relatable to nerds in that were teenagers in the 70s you know what i mean that's that's who he's relatable to and then as he grew up then he was like relatable to like you know like 20 somethings that don't have a lot of money and shit like that where miles morales is relatable to people not only people of color but people that just have fucking real world problems being in being in school and trying to figure out where he is in the world and and who he is as a person um i just think like that character because of Bendis's writing, uh, Brian Michael Bendis created him and, and brought him into you know the Ultimate Universe and then ultimately brought him into the Marvel Universe. Um, he he made a character that is very uh, very true to life as far as like you know what people actually go through, um, and he has and his his supporting cast to me is better than Peter Parker's supporting cast. Um, like he's got you know Ganke who's the the uh, his Asian friend who. Um, you know, is overweight and like he plays with like Legos and shit like that. And then like you've, it's basically the dude from Homecoming, Ned from Homecoming. Um, they they kind of hijacked Miles' best friend and right made on. him Peter's best friend. Um, but if you can imagine that kid in the comics, like that's that's Miles' best friend. So like I mean, to me, Miles is just the more robust and and full character. Um, so I really need him to succeed because I don't want I don't want him to go anywhere. I want him to be the Spider Man of the Marvel Universe eventually. I just have one question: Is Spider Man two thousand ninety nine going to be in the movie? 
We don't know. I don't know. Like, he could. I mean, Spider-Gwen, who is my least favorite Spider-Man based on the name. Uh, <laughs> like, I mean, she could be anything. Like, I, when they, they're supposed to officially change her name to Ghost Spider, which will be dope. Like, I'll be down with that. Like, but calling her Spider-Gwen is just the dumbest shit that I fucking ever heard. Word. Um, Gwenpool is another one that's fucking dumb. <laughs> oh, that's but, dumb. Yo, Gwenpool, people, oh people love that shit, though. Like, but she it's is always, such like, a... ICP fans and people who love Harley Quinn. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but she is, like, such a the popular people you character. Despise. But, they, but yeah. I thought that was, like, a joke. I mean, like, it more spun out of it. But originally, wasn't that just a joke? Oh, yeah, originally it was a joke. Marvel Comics covers? Just yeah. doing different Gwen themed stuff. Yeah, and then they did those horrible Scott E. Lee covers with like the baby Marvel covers oh, that were fucking the that. worst things bad. ever. Wait, Scotty in... Young? Scotty Young, yeah. Scotty Yo, Young, I... not Scotty Lee. Scottie I'm Young. sorry. She she just and you just fucked me up because I love Scotty Young. I'm on board no, with her. I can't no, stand them. He he's trash. Like I loved his <laughs> it was a Deadpool um Spider Man graphic novel cover because he did like actual art for it even though it has the same white background but he does good art when it's like adult proper artwork but this shit was trash like he got paid big money to do covers and they look like they took five minutes he did it on his phone with his finger not even a stylist it's just trash and when people call him out about it he's just like oh i'm blocking you like he's the worst he's no but if, but if you think if you think about it though they asked him to do that shit like he's not—he didn't just sit down and be like, "Oh, here's what you get." Yeah, but like shame said, on Marvel because they had like two covers for like every comic come out with like two different variant Scotty Young covers, and it's just mm -hmm. baby, baby Marvel, and it was yeah. everywhere. Baby Marvel is yeah. baby Marvel's popular. I fucking yeah. think I think they're cute. Uh, his Wizard of Oz shit is fucking dope, and I hate I hate. Fairyland was that the name of it? Yeah, I hate Fairyland. It was like I hate it's Fairyland, and then the alternative was fuck Fairyland. So fucking funny. Like I thought it was hilarious, and and his Rocket Raccoon series is called Rocket was fucking fantastic. So I mean, like I I mean, like yeah, like you can hate on him for the covers or whatever, but I mean, like I think as an artist, I think he's a great artist. I mean, I look at his shit; it's very original. It's very, uh, it's him. Like nobody else can do that. Like you could probably do that now. Like you probably look at his shit and be like, oh, I could draw that. But he did it first, and that's his shit. Like, that's his style. So it's you, like, yeah, I I'll guess tell you right so. now, from a collector standpoint, nobody buys those online. It's As somebody who was a comic store manager, I had one guy who bought it, and he had, like, knuckle tattoos with words that aren't appropriate. <laughs> so <laughs> I, will, I will say this. Those uh, those baby covers, those Marvel baby covers, they basically, those, that so skin looks like rosacea. In comparison <laughs> to how young, <laughs> and so long. I had a feeling this is where this was going. <laughs> According... Oh my god! Yeah, yeah super young, completely... super young man. Han Solo looks super young. That was that was three. That was the trilogy. All right. <laughs> oh man. Well, uh, yo, one thing I do want to talk about. Um, I'm going to throw everybody for a little bit of a loop on this because uh, we, we didn't mention that we were going to talk about it, but now is a better time than any. Um, so, uh, Ren, specifically, you are not a big fan of Jared Leto's performance as the Joker in Suicide Squad. Um, you hated him. Yeah, and he's cancer. Yeah, all right. Um, that's one adjective. So... Um, but it's been confirmed that he is mm -hmm. getting his own spin-off Joker movie. Uh, and that is definitely happening. It's not like a, a possibility. It is happening. Um, the other interesting thing is that the Joaquin Phoenix Joker, Joker movie is also still in production, directed by Todd Phillips, being produced by Martin Scorsese, <laughs> uh, which I feel like the Joaquin Phoenix one is probably going to do better uh, just because people are going to want to see like a new... I don't think so. I don't think so. I, I feel I, like that one's going to be hella artsy because, like, Martin Scorsese is behind it. Joaquin Phoenix, who's, like, very dedicated to the craft where everyone thought he was having a, a breakdown. It was actually him getting ready for a role. Mm. Like, he convinced people he was a mental person. I mean, he's probably mental, but not in the way that people thought. And, like, this one's going to be super artsy. I think it's going to be off base for more people. There are more trash bag people in the world than people who want to see a more artsy film. So it'll be like, oh, Jared Leto. You'll have the people who thinks he's hot. 
the people who hope that Harley Quinn are in it and the people who are just gross Walmart garbage people. Like I shop at but Walmart, it, but I'm talking about the garbage people. But it also depends on it also depends on like who's uh, who's directing it. And Todd Phillips is directing. He directed The Hangover. I mean, like it all depends on the marketing. You know what I mean? The marketing might be artsy as hell. Like the director has like a certain way they're going to do it. Like Martin Scorsese is producing it, but. You know, I also feel like it it could be put out there as something interesting where you might have, like, another crowd, you know, like the older crowd who wants to see a Scorsese film, and that's a large audience. If they, if they get a better costume designer who, like, they do it before he goes crazy and gets a picture of his mouth tattooed on his stomach and this horrible, like, purple joggers where he looks like our co-worker Jay Daniel but with green hair and like and <laughs> tattoos like oh my God. if they if they do a better job with that <laughs> and do like a pre-story or like a post uh, tattoo removal service joker like maybe I'll see it but the garbage bag cartoony but not in a good way joker that they had in Suicide Squad is just shambles fam yeah I mean I, I don't know I mean I I didn't really have like a super big problem with Jared Leto's portrayal of the Joker. I thought it was different. It was super emo. Um, <laughs> but I mean, like we're gonna we're gonna see like what happens. Like I wasn't I wasn't really crazy about like like a tatted out Joker. But I mean, that's a Jared Leto Joker, you know. So yeah, I guess we'll so see what happens. What do you guys think about this? I, I'm gonna go ahead. I will not be seeing either Joker movie probably. <laughs> I, I, I'm gonna say that. Uh, <laughs> Look, Unless there's an origin involved, then maybe I'll go see it when he's the Red Hood originally. Like, something right. like that, I'd be interested. But I don't want to see the Joker running around being stupid and just his <laughs> stupid shit. He's a supporting character, I think, personally. Like, I, I hate it. Suicide Squad with a passion. I thought that movie was so fucking garbage, mm -hmm. like, in every fucking way. The only things that I took pleasure in were Harley Quinn and the Joker. Um I did not like the aesthetic of the Joker, but I didn't think that Leto did a g horrible job portraying him. Um, I didn't think he was emo, because um, like emo is very I, I, he he didn't seem like sad or depressed or fucking re reclusive or <laughs> you know what I mean like he was definitely out there. Uh, and and I feel like his backstory was emo. <laughs> that's what he turned into. Like that's what that's what I meant by that. Uh, yeah, yeah, I yeah. I, I, sh I, I can see that. Um, the, the character though, and, and Leto and, and all that, like, I don't think that he, I don't, I talked about this before and that picture looks fucking horrible. Um, I think that's somebody's like doing like art on his face. I don't think it's actually him in real makeup. Yeah, no, that, that's fine. That picture does look horrible though. I, I do not want to see that. It just film. looks like Joaquin Phoenix went up for Halloween as the Joker. Yeah, and that's not. I don't. Th I think that's that's a mock up. It's not real. Yeah. Oh, okay. But but back to Joaquin. Uh, not Joaquin. Uh, Jared. Um, it wasn't his fault. Um, and as a matter of fact, there were a lot more Joker scenes in the film that got cut before the release that we never got to see. Um, that would have fleshed the character out a little bit, as or so he says. So I, I think this is his opportunity to shine as the Joker and get his chance to actually prove the naysayers wrong. And if he proves me wrong, that's great. There's nothing wrong with that. I am all for it if he can do it. If he doesn't prove me wrong, if he proves the rest of the world right, then, you know, fuck him. <laughs> like, it doesn't hurt me at all. Like, I mean, all I can do is benefit from him being a good Joker. I've already seen the horrible version. Um, if he can come out and do it right and they allow him to do it and he gets a good writer, good director, uh, you know, somebody that can do great camera work and, and special effects and makeup. If he does it right, great. If not, whatever. What I really want to know is, Jim, what do you think about the connection between the Joker and Han Solo's skin? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Han Solo's skin is better. I didn't bring it up. I, didn't, I wasn't going to say anything. I really wasn't. Well, I mean, I guess we'll see what happens with uh, with these movies when they come out. Um, I mean, the whole Jared Leto thing, people have their different views on it, but we're not going to know what happens until the Jared Leto Joker, you know, is is uh, released in theaters. And Joaquin Phoenix is weird as shit, so 
Uh, hopefully we'll see some weird shit when uh, that Todd Phillips movie comes out, but we won't know anything until the movies are released. So with that being said, we're going to take a quick break and we'll be back after that. You come to see me? I had to. That probably make us family. Uncle Bobby B, baby. Uncle Bobby B? Sam. Sam. Let me talk to you. Sam, your first enchilada of freedom awaits underneath one of those hoods. Let me tell you something, son. A driver don't pick the car. The car pick the driver. It's a mystical bond between man and machine. Son, I'm a lot of things. A lot's not one of them. Mm. Especially not in front of my mammy. That's my mammy. Hey, mammy! Oh, don't be like that. If I had a rock, I'd bust your head, bitch. Say, man, she deaf, you know? <laughs> And we're back, just like Bumblebee. Yeah, there was a trailer that came out. Three, two, one, start the trailer. <laughs> like, that's how the trailer starts. It's, it's fucking kind of goofy, but... Uh, it is. It <laughs> but, is. But, but, but to be real, uh, Bumblebee, I'm really interested in. I mean, I, I really don't like the look of the Transformers from the 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 Michael Bay like generation because mm -hmm. I'm a G1 guy. Um, I do realize that you know having these big giant like boxy robots that have human faces um, mm -hmm. is kind of silly. So I wouldn't want to see that exactly. But I really didn't like the direction that they went in. Um, however, and I get that they kind of want to keep the same look so they can kind of keep the same audience, but. Um, yeah, Bumblebee is going to be a thing. That's going to be a movie. He's going to have his own movie. Transformers, by the way. Anybody who doesn't know uh... <laughs> who Bumblebee is. Yeah. I mean, look. This is a prequel, right? This is like before yes. Transformers. Yes. And, and oh, it is? Oh, yeah. all right. Like when he was actually a VW bug, like an old style VW bug. Oh, that answers that question. Okay. That makes sense. All right. Because I was, I was like, why is he a, a bug? Yeah, well, that's so. Is that how Eddie, it started in the comics? In the in the cartoon, in the comic books, like Bumblebee is absolutely a VW bug. Okay, so this is an origin story of Bumblebee, how he started. Right. All right, never mind. That makes sense. Okay. Yeah. I like did. this is before the rest of the Transformers got there to like join forces and and shit. So. I did like how in the trailer, and God, I hope that I'm right, and I'm not just thinking of something else. In the trailer. When the girl was looking at the the Volkswagen, wasn't there like a like a bee's nest inside the inside the? the it was uh, it was underneath like one of the tires. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I love that because from my youth, in the back of my parents' house, there used to be a VW Bug, and there was a giant effing wasp's nest in it. Yeah, and that's and that's what I remember from Volkswagens is like if you don't pay attention to it <laughs> the bees will like have will give up residency in it. Yeah, mm -hmm. my parents had like a Volkswagen something or other. I don't even it was like a weird like elongated Volkswagen bug. I don't know if anybody's seen these things, but I can't remember what the fuck it's called, but it has like a long nose. Um anyway. Uh but yeah, same thing. We had there was I believe like, it exists. Yes. I believe No, it. same thing though. There was there was like a fucking like some kind of like insect nest. Uh, I think it was like bees, hornets, wasps, whatever. Um, I think they just love fucking nesting in in VWs. Hell yeah! Something about it's, German engineering that's, that that's, just attracts. <laughs> if I'm gonna go see this movie, I'm gonna go see it. In a, yeah, the bees' text. nest. Mm. That's in this transformer. But uh, but yeah, I think it's cool that they're going back to roots and giving us like the the original Bumblebee uh, concept where he's like a a, a Volkswagen bug. Um, I think it's cool that they've got this, like, young girl that's, like, you know, friends with him or whatever. And I think it's really weird that they're in the, the water, like, and she's, like, caressing his face. Like, I thought that was odd. It's like Shape of Water Part 2. Yeah. The movie is fucking weird. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I think it was interesting, cool. I, I, one of the things that really stuck out to me in the trailer, though, was how they used um, the uh, audio from the first Transformers movie when Shia LaBeouf buys the car because it's clearly Bernie Mac saying like the, the car, like the, the kid doesn't, the guy doesn't choose the car. The car chooses you. 
And that's when he was actually in the lot with his dad trying to figure out what kind of car he was going to buy. Yeah, it was nice to use, to hear Bernie Mac again. Yeah, because, you he know, actually, like, I love Bernie Mac. He, he actually came back no, and re-recorded oh, those, <laughs> those lines for this, yeah, for this trailer. The same lines, so it was a waste of him coming back. <laughs> he couldn't have recorded new lines. But, no, I... I, I uh, Here's something weird. This is, oh, I'm gonna came back at about the same time as Moose from Top Gun. <laughs> uh, Moose. <laughs> so <laughs> that's what's really cool about this. Moose died because he put his jet in the middle of the road. I don't care what you think of Han Solo's skin. It is definitely better than Bernie Mac's now. Wow, I, you'd probably be right. I think that I think that's gonna probably. be uh, the top fucking one right there. I will. Um, Ah, I know I'm going to eat it for this, but so the second Transformers movie, um, even though it's Michael Bay and blah, 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 there is a scene uh, in that movie that for some reason always got to me. uh, And it was the scene where uh, he's in the desert and Bumblebee is there and he they basically spring a trap and his parents are like pop out. And that was like to get... uh, Sam's character to come to his parents so they could grab him and his parents are like confused as to why they're there and they see Sam and there's all these robots and his father is like you're not going anywhere you're staying here and then he's like I gotta go he's like I gotta go like and it's like this whole scene for some reason like I don't know what it was but like that scene always got me with his dad and his dad's like you come back and it was just like for some reason that always got me. Like, and like then, touched you deeply, yeah, or yeah, no, seriously, right. I don't know why. I don't, I, I can't explain it. It's something about that scene that always got me. I don't know what it is, and I, I literally cannot explain it. Did family, you family cry? values? No, no, not. It's not it's that. Okay if you it's did. maybe, maybe it's like I'm, I'm really close with my father, and I feel yeah, like if I was ever values. in that scene, and my dad said that to me, like it was, it was weird. So, but then at the end of that scene. Uh, he he basically yells like he yells to B and B's like behind the wall and the the thing that's about to attack them doesn't know he's there and, and B jumps out and saves him right and mm-hmm. basically is able to stop and protect his family and I always thought that was cool so like I've always liked Bumblebee's character because even though he can't talk he comes through with like different audio like movie references which I always thought was cool um, he always finds a way to communicate in really unique ways. And I've always just liked that aspect of the character. Um, So when I was watching this trailer um, and I'm hearing like Bernie Max, like throwback to the first movie. And then she's underneath the car and she's scanning the underneath the car and you see the face. And then she comes over it again. The eyes light up and the fucking he starts transforming. Like for me, dude, I'm watching that and I got kind of goosebumps. I was like, oh, shit. Like. That was really cool. See, for me, I, like for me, like everybody shits on the Michael Bay movies, but with the Fuck one the Michael Bay movies, yeah, that's fine. And if you're, I mean, for storyline wise, it like I, I guess you could say that. But like for me, I always thought the way that they transformed in the Michael Bay movies was fucking awesome. Like I thought it was really cool. I thought the special effects were great, and I thought the noises oh, yeah, no, came if, into if play they, really if, well. If they never opened their mouths and talked, and they never had like tried to make a story out of it like yeah. just watching them transform would have been fucking awesome i i i like when i first saw the first transformers movie like i had, i had gone to see it like five or six times just because i was in awe of seeing a, a thing transform into another thing on the big screen because it, it's such a big part of my childhood so i get that part it's just it's just everything else so yeah, everything i mean else. But, which is fine which is fine but i mean like the the whole like transforming thing there wasn't really anything s- said in that scene in the trailer and i thought that was fucking cool but I mean, I don't, I don't really know what to think of this movie other than what I saw in the trailer and what I know of Bumblebee in the past. Here's my, here's my only thing about Bumblebee. So Transformers are this alien technology, and they are brilliant, and they know everything. You think that they would have been able to fix Bumblebee's voice module? <laughs> like he like he's going on this long, not being able to talk. Like he just go in there and be like pew pew, like fucking fix it so he can talk again. That that's the only thing that never made sense to me. But it's a cool aspect of the character. With that being said, that I, I enjoyed the trailer. So mm. but I don't know what to think of. It's not directed by Michael Bay, so. You going to see it, Dugas? No. <laughs> <laughs> Were there any other Transformers in the preview? Uh, actually, yeah, Starscream. Starscream, oh, yeah, okay. yeah. And he looked fucking dope. 
Hell like yeah. like another one that they actually brought back to basics. Like he was he was the blue and red and white. And yeah, like I he saw j- that. like he looked exactly like Starscream from the the originals. Like he had like the fucking big like uh, vents on the side of his head and like well, it, there's hope then for the movie. Star yeah, no, it, lo- it looked dope. Um, I love to serve you, Lord Megatron. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Megatron. <laughs> Megatron. I freaking love I love Starscream, man. He's one of my favorite characters, but. But I, yeah, I just again, I just think it's really cool that they're going back to basics. And uh, from what I've heard, they're trying to build a shared universe with GI Joe. And if they yep, the Hasbro universe, with yeah. Rom, mm-hmm. uh, GI Joe, Micronauts, Micronauts. Because that's what the Can... kids want to see: Transformers and Shanning Tatum. <laughs> <laughs> For real, yeah. Can we agree on one thing? Am I? Am I the only one that thinks that Hugo Weaving was a baller Megatron or no? Yo, Hugo Weaving was good as Megatron. I loved him. I, I, I thought I he would was have, great, dude. I Who was that? The Hugo voice? Weaving was the voice of Megatron. Oh, yeah. He was awesome. All right, I cool. All right, because I didn't think – I thought Megatron was pretty fucking cool. I mean, I All would right. have preferred – But you got Frank, Peter – Sorry, sorry. I would, have, I would have preferred Frank Weller. Okay. Didn't he, didn't he do Megatron in one of the movies? I thought he did come back in one of the movies to do. I think he. Uh, I think he may have been in. Let me look it up right was now. Was it the last one? Are right? you looking that up? Quick trivia. Do you guys know which band sang the uh, the original Transformers theme song for the cartoon? Lion. What was it? Lion. White Lion. White Lion. Close. All right. All right. We're at <laughs> high five to that. Transformers. Another fun fact. <laughs> yeah. Do we know what? I was other close popular, enough, bro. All right. Yeah. Do we know what other popular cartoon <laughs> character Peter Cullen voiced? The Predator. He was the he was the voice. Well, I'm sorry, but he was the the sound of the Predator. He came up with that. Oh, besides that, yeah. Okay, but was yeah, referring yeah, to cartoon. Yeah. Eeyore. Eeyore. Yes, he was in. Uh, oh, he was actually in okay. Revenge of the Fallen. <laughs> he was in Revenge of the Fallen, uh, Dark of the Moon, and The Last Night. So, like, the only one that oh, I the guess one that, that bombed with Mark Wahlberg. Hey guys, yeah. I think I found the Transformer. So I, I guess the only one that he wasn't in, I guess the only one that he actually wasn't in was uh, what you call it, uh, the first one, because he was in Age of Extinction as well. Hey Peter Cullen, say hi to your mother for me. Yeah, so Frank, <clears throat> it's Frank Welker. I did say Frank Weller. That was uh, a combination of him and Peter Weller, who is a uh, Robocop. Yeah, I'm like, what the hell are you talking about? Yeah, Frank Welker is uh, is is dope as fuck. Wait for it. That is the We're Transformers the movie. Let's take it. Um, Here we go. Yeah, that is the uh, that is the 1984 uh, or 83 yeah, yeah. Uh, Transformers the so movie. That's, that's 1986. That's Transformers the, one? the that movie. Is that the one I'm thinking of? That's it was. The, I don't think that's the, the. That's the theme song to the animated movie. Right. Yeah. yeah. The, oh, are you thinking of a different one? White Lion does, I believe. For the cartoon, for the, the TV show cartoon. Well, that was from the cartoon movie, but and then yeah, you that was also from the had. Movie, but they did the they did the uh, the intro for the the, the intro as well. Just for the regular cartoon, not okay. The movie. Oh, I know. Maybe we're thinking something different. I believe. But yeah. I know the other one from the from the cartoon movie was the Touch by Stan Bush. Yeah. Yes. You got the touch. You got the power. Ah, yeah. Really? <laughs> Which was so fucking good. awesome, man. So good, man. Really quick, and then we can move on. Last night I was watching an episode uh, of this show on Netflix. It's work. called The Toys That, that Made Us. Uh huh. I don't know if anybody has watched yes. any of yes. this. It's I haven't great. yet. Another great one on He Man. The last episode that I watched last night was on the Transformers. That oh, was nice. this. That was season two, right? Yeah, it's on season, season two because there's been two seasons. The toys that made us. There was one on He Man, GI Joe. I think there was one on Barbie. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was another one. Yeah, trans- so it's basically they'll go over like an entire. Like, what, uh, Star what, Wars. Where, where did yeah, you catch that? Season. Netflix. Oh, awesome. I gotta yeah. definitely watch yeah, that. Yeah, take a look. It's really good. I'm a huge He Man fan. There was so much mm. stuff about He Man I did not know. It, like, all that, like, the whole, like, animated series was an accident. They pitched it to a major, like, company and they were like, that's all it is. They're like, we also have an animated series that they lied about on the spot. And then they were like, okay. And then they're like, we gotta create an animated series now. And, like, they created it within, like, a couple weeks. It was, like, or months. It was, like, it was awesome. Yeah, I'm not going to give anything away, but Transformers is one of the better episodes. Yeah. It's There's a lot of stuff in there that you may or may not be surprised about. Word. All right. Word. 
Yeah, man. So uh, moving right along. And Peter Cullen is in it. Speaking of speaking of Transformers, and the toys I got that made us. Yeah, I got nothing. Uh, puppets. <laughs> yeah. Uh, puppets. Puppets. Sesame Not Street. Not puppets. Muppets. Puppets and Muppets and Sesame Street. So uh, there's a movie coming out. What the hell's the name of it? I'm never Happy gonna. Happy Time Murders. <laughs> Thanks. I don't know why I can never like remember that. It just it doesn't sound like anything to do with puppets and I or Muppets and that's why it throws me off. But yeah, the Happy Time Murders. Uh, a movie that I saw the preview for when I went to see Deadpool. Um, if you have not seen the preview for it, please look up the Red Band trailer on YouTube, um, and you'll get to see why this movie is going to be awesome in theaters. Um, these uh, Muppets, or puppets, whatever you want to call them, are basically coexisting with humans in the real world. And um, they are vulgar, they are make sex jokes, they are violent, um, basically everything that goes against what a, a Muppet or Puppet would do in Sesame Street. And one of the taglines to the movie is, not Sesame, just Street. And because of that, Sesame Street decided to sue this movie and say, you can't use uh, anything related to Sesame Street with your movie because we don't want anything to do with it uh, because it is against everything that Sesame Street stands for. So they brought it to court. And the court deemed that uh, there was nothing uh, in the trailer that related it to Sesame Street and uh, that the lawsuit would not move any further. So um, Sesame Street's lawsuit has kind of been, you know, laid to rest. It's not going any further. They're not going to win any money or whatever. It's just been dismissed. Um, But I I have to say, man, this trailer looks fucking hilarious. So, I mean, you guys, I mean, you've seen the trailer. What did you think of the trailer? I thought that it looked hysterical yeah i'm going to keep an open mind about it Mm -hmm. because this seems like it could be one of those movies where the funniest things are in the trailer to get you to go see it but i'm very optimistic this looks like something that the south park creators could have made and i know they're not attached to this but it uh it looks promising melissa mccarthy good for her yeah let's have her let's get her a vehicle that utilizes her better she's i mean she's really good at on the spot comedy if you've ever seen like any of the outtakes for movies like after the credits like they really show like her improv skills and i feel like th- that she's not used well in a lot of the movies she's been in recently she's they good at saturday night live too she, yeah very good at snl which i think shows her her like theater skills um the other thing is um you know i think the the best movie that she's had since uh, I've known about her was Bridesmaids. I mean, Bridesmaids, she killed it. But after that, I haven't really seen her in anything that has made me really laugh my ass off. And I think that this is going to be one of those movies. I mean, they do things that it reminds me when you said South Park, it also reminds me of which was a, a, a musical made by South Park, which was the Book of Mormon, uh, where they make fun of everything. Um, and I went to see that and there were a lot of like rich people who went to see this. It's like, Oh, it was a show that did really well on Broadway. So I'm going to go see it with my wife. And then they're sitting in the theater like, Oh, this is despair. I can't get to leave the theater. I can't believe I'm watching this trash. Kind of reminds you know? me of uh, <laughs> team America from the guys. Oh from, yeah. <laughs> that's what the movie reminds Everyone me of. Everyone has AIDS. Like that whole where they made fun of rent. Not like, everyone does. No, they don't, but they made fun of rent. And the fact that they actually went that far was hilarious. You know what I mean? It's, 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 Definitely going to be up there with offensive. After out of all the movies that we've discussed, this is probably the only movie that I will see that we've talked about. <laughs> that I will see, but you saw Solo, man, and you right, right. But I had already seen that, so oh, but right. for the movies that were that are coming out, this is the one that that I'll see. It just it's it looks intriguing. Okay, definitely, man. I'm I'm looking forward to see it. But uh, uh, on a smaller note, uh, basically, bottom line is that Sesame Street it did not win that lawsuit. Cool. Do you got anything to say about this one? Uh, I mean, uh, yeah, it's going to be hilarious, and I think it's fucking hilarious that they tried to sue them for that shit. I think that's probably more funny than the movie. Um, <laughs> I mean, like, seriously, like, I mean, they just made a fucking, like, to because it was a funny joke, you know what I mean? It, they weren't trying to gain any notoriety off of a fucking Sesame Street. Um, like, you, you don't have to do that. Like, when you have a Muppet in your movie... You automatically think Sesame Street anyway, so you don't have to bring the name in. Like, it's just they used the name because it was a funny fucking joke to make in the trailer, which is just a trailer full of fucking dick and fart jokes and (laughs) and 
like drug jokes, drug jokes, cum jokes, yeah, all plus, that shit. Like, I mean, like they covered every fucking type of joke. Like, so to get pissed off because they said, "Oh, Sesame and no All Street, no Sesame and All Street." I mean, they're basically disassociating themselves from Sesame Street by saying that. Yeah, that's right. True. If they if they're not using any of the characters, then they have no, no foot to stand on. Which is why I you. think this was kind of dismissed because it was bullshit. And now Sesame Street lost this lawsuit and gave a whole bunch of publicity to this new movie. Mm-hmm. Exactly, yeah. So it did the opposite of what they wanted to do. Um, with that being said, uh, there is something else that is uh, not going to theaters but is getting a ton of views uh, through Netflix, uh, which is a uh, four-episode, 45-minute-per-episode documentary uh, called Evil Genius, which uh, I know... Three of us have seen Mark. Uh, we've talked to you about it, so you can kind of weigh in on, on what you think you're gonna if you're gonna view it or not. Uh, I know that you've watched some of Making a Murderer, um, and and uh, most of us, most people have watched Making a Murderer, which is based on Stephen Avery. If you liked that, you probably will really enjoy this. It's kind of picking up the same type of traction that that, that did when that first came out. I honestly think it's. I mean, I think the documentary is fucking much better done. Um, than the the making a murderer. It I was, agree. It was more fast paced. Yeah. It was four episodes. Like it didn't try to drag it out. Like making a murderer, I got the fucking point by episode four. Like why did I have to watch six more episodes? Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. The uh, Dupless brothers uh, actually did the was were the executive producers of this, which I think right. it had a big part of it uh, being a, a better or more well put together documentary. I mean, I don't know if you know who these guys are, but they if I don't know what else they've done, but I watched this show on on HBO called Together. Um, mm-hmm. It was out for two seasons and then it was canceled. But I don't, and I have no idea why it was canceled because it was a phenomenal show. Mark Duplass is a character on the FX show The League. Yes. Ah, and which yeah, one he's is an he? actor? He's this guy on the right. I, yeah, I don't know his name. Oh name. yes, okay, awesome. But he's also he also uh, has done a couple of movies called Creep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he was actually in Together as well. Like he was one of the main characters in Together, um, and his brother Jay is one of the other um, is is his you know fellow writer slash producer director uh, for that show. So it's him and his brother that do that show. That's just their ba- their baby. But this here, um, like this show, this uh, make not making a murderer, but uh, evil fucking genius. evil genius. Is is like their puppy. Like they they executive produced that shit, which means that they put the money out for it. They kind of like, I don't. They didn't really handpick anything, but I'm sure like they had a relationship with the director in order to do this. Um, so that's just my two cents on like why it was like such a well done documentary. I thought it was. I thought it was excellent pacing. It kept you wrapped in the story the entire time. It, it was a perfect amount of time. You were right. Four episodes was perfect to lay everything out. And it, I thought it really did a good job of showcasing how Marjorie Deal Armstrong is really like a modern day Charles Manson. Like mm. she's just this absolutely insane evil genius mm-hmm. who was able to twist other people around her finger to do her bidding. She was a master she, manipulator. Oh yeah, she's but she she's wasn't the only evil genius in the crew though. People. Mm. She wasn't the only evil genius in the crew, though, because there was Bill Rothstein, who was he. I mean, that dude was also fucking super intelligent and, and able to manipulate people and stuff like. So they were almost like a team. Yeah, but that together. dude was a little whipped because yeah, of her. Yeah, I mean, though. like in the end, yeah, he did everything for Marjorie. It was obvious. He talked about it many times that he, after he dated Marjorie, he didn't date anybody else, and it stopped being a sexual <coughs> thing. And it just started becoming an obsessive thing Mm. where it was just something about her. I need to be a part of her life. Yeah, even though, like, I mean, they showed pictures of her, like, when she was younger. And, like, she was awkward at first. And then she grew up and she got, like, attractive. And then, like, as she got older, she got, like, more and more, like, crazy and, like, unattractive. Was she attractive, though? Like, every time I looked at her, I was like, wow, she has Bill Hader eye. Like, she is just, like, one... (laughs) You know what I mean? Like just one eye is just yeah, a but little cl- more I know closed what, I than know what the you're, other. I know what you're saying. It's but... like Rufus Sewell eye. <laughs> no, but like, but like she had that. I felt like the lazy eye 
came out more it was it was more obvious as she got older. Oh yeah. But like the pictures of her when she was in like her mid twenties, I thought she was attractive, but then like, you know, towards the end of her life where she's in the prison and shit and she's like lost it. I'm like, why does this guy still give a fuck about this lady? She's like she's nuts she's Yeah, fucking, I mean they they kept talking about shit? Like, like let it go, bro. You're like, right. <laughs> you're right though, Jim. They kept talking about her being attractive and shit and like when she even when she was like in her in her twenties, whatever. I'm looking at her, and I'm like, yeah. "What are you talking about?" Like, like they really hyped her up. And like, it was like she was the the prettiest. They kept saying this in the show that she was the prettiest girl in town. Yeah. And I was like, "Man, that is a fucking ugly town." Yeah. <laughs> that, is, that is just a town of yeah. ones. <laughs> yeah, that town. Yeah, that. Like, I mean, like, oh, man, yeah, like, just I don't, I didn't see it at all, but. I mean, I guess, like, in that area or whatever, like, she was a 10. I'll, I'll make a judgment. I'll see it. It's only four episodes, so it's not too much of a commitment. Sounds like a good show. I'm down. But, yeah, is that, like, when you watch it, though, like, I mean, like, they, they it starts off, and, like, at, by the end of the first episode, like, the end of the first episode is just like, what? And it makes you want to watch the next one. And then you watch the next one, and it builds up, and at the end of the next one, you're like, wait a minute, what? Yeah, that... <laughs> That first like that, episode had a great cliffhanger. Yeah. That was a perfect, now I need to watch the second episode. Yeah, yeah. No, And really I mean, good. like, was it really, like, I don't know if it was really, like, a, if I would call it a cliffhanger, right? Like, because it was more just, like, it just became intriguing. You know what I mean? It just made it more intriguing, like, the way that they ended it. Because, like, the second one didn't pick up where the first one left off. The second one gave you the story of the next person in line, which was I, th- I think it was Bill Rothstein, right? You know, what, yeah, you know what in the I second liked? episode. It was, and what I liked about the first episode was, it like in the first episode they're like, um, Marjorie, what's her name? Uh, Marjorie Deal Armstrong. Yeah, Marjorie Deal Armstrong wasn't what you would consider normal, right? And then it's the second episode, but it's like. Yeah. Bill like, Rothstein isn't what you would consider normal. <laughs> it's yeah, no, like, oh. like the way they started it though was really cool. It was like there are three things you need to know about Marjorie Deal, whatever, Armstrong, Armstrong, yeah. right? And then they would the first thing, <laughs> and then they'd go into it, and then they keep, and then later in the show they're just like the fourth thing you need to know about Marjorie Deal Armstrong, and like they that's how they wrapped it up, and then. The next one started off just like you said, and then they said there are three things that you need to know <laughs> yeah. about Bill Rothstein. <laughs> right, right. You know, and, and and oh, what about Jessica, the the whore? Oh, the prostitute. Yeah, oh, I yeah. Fuck her. The one who, <laughs> the number one, number one white girl. <laughs> the one, the one who like literally wrapped it up. You know, well, yeah. she didn't. But the one who like who like wrapped it up at the end of the series and basically was the one who knew everything that happened and pretty much closed the case. You, you know, know who didn't wrap it up? Who? The kid, the dude that got killed. Nah. Yeah, because, like, P- what was his name? Peter? What? Was his name Peter? Paul? Something like that? Mary? Yeah. He <laughs> he didn't wrap it up because she, she, she got pregnant. She got she had his kid. Oh, yeah. That's what yeah. they said, that she, uh, yeah, what's his name? Yeah, the, the, Brian the, Wells. Brian Wells, yeah. Yeah, Brian Wells. That's a Brian. Yep. Peter, yeah. Paul, Mary, Brian. Yep, that's it. <laughs> One of the things that I really liked about this episode, or this this series rather, is that it really makes you think about where you were when this happened because it wasn't a very, it was a very recent, I guess. Uh, two thousand three. Two thousand three, and then this finally got wrapped up in like two thousand seven, and it's like I don't remember hearing anything about this. Yeah, two thousand. No, they- I would remember that shit. I don't remember anything about this. This is like the cool like. I'm sorry, it's not cool, but like it was just like some like textbook like comic villain, um, like device that this dude had on his neck. It, it was, was just so like it was like Saw. Time. Yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah, like Saw. It almost yeah. made me think that like Saw was made, you know, with this in mind. Like, hey, what if this was blah blah blah? Like it, like that trap, that that thing that was around Homeboy's neck was like that was some fucking jigsaw level. <laughs> shit oh, it yeah. really it was, was it was a it was just too much watching tv well the other thing too <laughs> was they they said too you know um that that device that he had on his neck was they don't know if it was built to actually work at first but then marjorie was like or bill was like uh i need two oven timers and like when she gave them to him 
that was the clue that it was actually going to be used to be a real bomb, which is crazy. Here's my my thing with that. They set that guy up and we're fine. I guess he was expendable. <laughs> because, like, did they really think he was going to get to a certain point where they could take that shit off? Because what if he got, like, did they ever factor in, like, yo, if he wasn't caught by the cops? He wasn't, he wasn't part of it. No, I know that, but yeah, like, they but they, they try to make it like he was part of it, but he wasn't part of it. But that's my point, though. They, they I knew they wasn't they, that he wasn't part of it, but did they actually think we're okay if this guy goes down? Like if he if this thing blows up on his head? I mean, uh, I, I guess so. Does Does anybody else here? You guys watched it. You eventually will watch it, so I'll get your thoughts on it later. But does anybody think that Marjorie Deal Armstrong? Is a dead ringer for Louis Anderson. <laughs> I don't, I don't see that. But now that you say it, I guess I could see some of it. Mm. Not at all. <laughs> Yo, oh. what did poor bastard? Did she shave her eyebrows? Did she burn them she off? Did. She, she did. She shaved them. She shaved right. them to look freaky as fuck. Yeah. yeah. I don't know why anybody would do that to themselves. I was she. <laughs> she looked bad enough, but I mean, like that fucking just she took it over the any, top. She wasn't getting any prettier. Like by <laughs> leaving, like leaving the eyebrows on, no one's gonna be like, "Now I fuck her." Like, it's <laughs> fun. <laughs> yeah, that's the <laughs> oh, wow, she's hot. Yeah, no, she's not. That's maybe like thirty years ago she was. Yeah, it's really fucked up because they were always like saying like how she would she would confess to other inmates that she killed people and like it it's just it's really scary to know that there are people out there like that you know that will get away with murder and will joke about it later that's fucking nuts. she was nuts she was out of her mind but regardless check out evil genius on netflix it's worth the watch um it, it is definitely something that will keep you hooked but it's only five, four hours of your time and uh, i think it's worth it so check it out yeah, yeah. <laughs> so with that being said, uh, I think that does it this week for the Red Beard Podcast. You guys got anything else? No, nah, just uh, you know, check us out on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter at Red Beard Podcast. And uh, you, if you want to hear more of Mr. Mark Dugas, you can actually check him out on We Love Wednesdays every Thursday. That's going to be every Thursday with yours truly. All right, thanks for having me, guys. Appreciate it. Oops. Yeah, man. Thanks, Mark, for coming on. It was a good yeah, time. A lot of fun. Thank you. And um, Ren had to take off early, but. Uh, we love Ren, too. Thanks, Ren. Yes, we do. <laughs> Thank you, Ren. Mm -hmm. Later. Rest peace. in peace, Kate Spade. <laughs>